بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على محمد خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful I testify that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is Allah's true slave and messenger May Allah and سلام, be upon him his household, his household, and the noble companions and those who follow on their path until the day of resurrection. We continue the explanation of the three fundamental principles and the author, Rahimahullah, now is focusing on what constitutes the most serious of all that Allah forbade. And this is shirk. And he said, وَعَظَمُ مَا نَهَا عَنْهُ الشِّرْكُ وَهُوَ دَعْوَةُ غَيْرِهِ مَعَهُ This is the text. And the most serious thing that he, Allah, forbade is shirk, which is to invoke others besides him, along with him, and then he gave the proof from the Quran, from Surah Al-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 36. وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah alone, making all worship purely for him, and do not associate anything in worship along with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَعْضَمُ مَا نَهَا عَنْهُ الشِّرْكِ The greatest of all, or the most serious of all that Allah forbade is shirk. And a shirk in its original meaning means the share. al nasib in Arabic. So if someone associates some something or someone besides Allah along with him then in this case he took he gave a share to others now why is the shirk is the most serious of all that Allah forbade the answer is because it is the greatest of all rights the greatest of all rights it is because that the greatest of all rights is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his right upon his slaves is to worship him and sing him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship so if he ascribes partners to Allah in this then in this case he relinquishes and neglects the greatest right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it came in the narration reported by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah from Ibn Mas'ud may Allah be pleased with him where he said Sa'altu I asked or Su'ida or that the messenger sallallahu was asked Ayyu al-Dhanbi and Allah a'zam which is of the greatest sins with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is the greatest sin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said أَنْ تَجْعَلَ بِاللَّهِ نِدًّا وَهُوَ خَلَقَكْ the greatest sin is that you set up a rival to Allah when he it is he who created you and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Mu'adh bin Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, أَتَدْرِي مَا حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعِبَادِ عَلَى عِبَادِهِ Do you know what's Allah's right upon his slaves? Mu'adh responded, Allah وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمْ Allah and his messenger know best. Then he, صلى الله عليه وسلم, explained, حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى عِبَادِهِ Allah's right upon his slaves and يعبدوه to worship him 
وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا and ascribe no partners with him in worship. This indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right upon his slaves. So anyone who negates this and neglects it, then he is doing a negation and neglect of the most or the greatest of all rights of Allah and that is the right to worship him alone so in case a person violates the right of Allah this right then he has violated the greatest of all rights and that is to sing Allah alone in worship and this is Tawheed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made clear that shirk is the greatest transgression and the greatest wrong as in Surah Luqman chapter 31 verse 13 قال الله عز وجل إن الشرك لظلم عظيم فلد الشرك is the greatest wrong or greatest transgression and that it is the tremendous sin in another verse in Surah An-Nisa in chapter 4 verse 48 قال الله تعالى وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اِفْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ افْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Whoever associates partners in worship along with Allah He has indeed invented a tremendous sin And Allah also considered it as straying far from the correct way as in Surah An-Nisa chapter 4 verse 116 قال الله تعالى وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا and he whoever associates and sets up partners in worship with Allah he has strayed far from the correct way and that associating anything in worship with Allah then this is a cause for forbidding paradise for the person and that the person's abode if he dies on this will be the hellfire we seek refuge in Allah from this. قال الله تعالى إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه النار وما للظالمين من أنصار. As in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter five, verse seventy-two. Whoever associates anything in worship with Allah or sets up partners with Allah in worship. Then Allah has forbidden paradise for him and the fire will be his abode and for the Dhalimeen, the polytheists and the wrongdoers there are no helpers and in the hadith of Jabir which is reported in Sayyid Muslim Jabir radiallahu ta'ala who reported that the Prophet sallallahu said whoever meets Allah not associating anything in worship with him will enter paradise and whoever meets him associating anything in worship along with him will enter the fire and this is in testimony to this verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah which we just recited chapter 5 verse 72 
And he وسلم, also said Whoever dies while still calling upon a rival to Allah will enter the fire And this is reported in Sahih Bukhari The author rahimahullah defined what is shirk In his text When he said وَأَعْظَمُ مَا نَهَا عَنْهُ الشِّرْكِ The most serious thing that he forbade is shirk. And then he said, وَهُوَ وَهُوَ دَعْوَةُ غَيْرِهِ مَعَهُ And it is invoking others besides him along with him. setting along with Allah other gods like taking an angel or angels or a messenger or messengers or awliya friends of Allah or a stone or a human worshipping them as they worshipping them as he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is manifested by their invocation invoking the angels, the messengers, the awliya, the stones, the humans, the creation seeking their help in that which only Allah can offer slaughtering to them, making vows to them and the like from the acts of worship and this is the major shirk this is the major shirk and this major shirk is four types the first is the shirk of invocation the shirk, the shirk of dua shirk of dua and it is that the person invokes other than Allah from the like of a prophet or an angel or a close friend of Allah through means of nearness seeking refuge, seeking help praying to them invoking a dead or an absent person or the like from that which is only particular to Allah in matters which are only particular to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the evidence for this is in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-ankabut 29 65 Allah ta'ala فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ And when they embark on a ship, they invoke Allah, making their faith pure for him only. But when he brings them safely to land, behold, they give a share of their worship to others. They give a share of their worship to others. This is the first type, the shirk of invocation. The second is the shirk of intention. The shirk, the shirk of intention. In which the person may perform the essence of worship or the origin the original aspect of worship he does this as a show off or for worldly gains and the evidence for this the evidence for this is in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Hud verses 15 to 16 مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا نُوَفِّ إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارِ 
وحبط ما صنعوا فيها وباطل ما كانوا يعملون Whoever desires the life of the world and its glitter, to them we shall pay in full the wages of their deeds therein, and they will have no diminution therein. They are those for whom there is nothing in the hereafter but fire, and vain are the deeds they did therein, and of no effect is that which they used to do. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned that this type of shirk, the shirk in intentions, is the sea without a shore. Few are saved from this. So anyone who seeks in his works, in his deeds, other than the face of Allah Azza wa Jal, and intends something other than drawing near to Allah, and seeking his reward then in this case he commits shirk in his intention and to consider this type of shirk from the major shirk is based upon this that the person brings the deed for total show off or totally for this life and its glitter not intending the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the next life. Such deeds, in fact, in a, with this description, does not originate from the believer, from a believer. Because the believer, even if he is weak in his faith, it is inevitable that he seeks Allah and the hereafter, even when his faith is weak. And if both objectives are on the same level, on the same degree, or close, making meaning this life and seeking Allah, then this constitutes a diminution in Iman, in faith and in Tawheed. And his deeds are incomplete because they lack the perfection of sincerity. If on the other hand, the person conducts his deed solely for Allah's face and for the hereafter with perfect sincerity, and if he is given something known to help him carry such deeds, then this is of no harm to him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put a share from wealth in the form of zakah and from booties in the battlefield as reward to be distributed to cover the benefits of the Muslim and their welfare. In that case there is no harm. The third form of shirk is the shirk of obedience where the person sets for himself a legislator other than Allah or a partner in legislation other than Allah accepting his legislation and taking it as a deen as a deen in halal and in haram as a worship and means of nearness to this legislating to this legislator whom he took as a partner so if this declares something haram then the one who obeys him takes it also as haram and considers the halal which is legislated to be halal by this partner 
he also takes it as halal convictionally and takes it as a deen then this becomes a worship legislator which he follows and this is illustrated in the verse or evident in the verse from and in the explanation of the verse in the hadith as well the verse is in Surah Tawbah 9 31 Allah Azza wa Jal اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله والمسيح ابن مريم وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا إلها واحدة وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا إلها واحدة لا إله إلا هو سبحانه عما يشركون that the Jews and the Christians took their rabbis and their monks to be their lords besides Allah by obeying them in things which they made lawful or unlawful according to their own desires without being ordered by Allah they took this as a deen and they also took their lord the Messiah son of Mary Maryam السلام, while there the Jews and the Christians were commanded in the Torah and, and also in the Injil and the Gospel to worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here the companion Uday bin Hatim May Allah be pleased with him. When he heard the Prophet ﷺ reciting this verse, he told him, We don't worship them. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَلَيْسَ يُحَرِّمُونَ مَا أَحَلَّ اللَّهِ فَتُحَرِّمُونَهُ Don't they declare as forbidden that which Allah made lawful and then you take it as such and you make tahrim of it you also take it as forbidden and you accept meaning as forbidden taking this to be permissible meaning to you permit it to be as such as forbidden وَيُحِلُّونَ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ فَتُحِلُّونَهُ And they declare permissible that which Allah made unlawful. And you do the same. They said yes. He said yes. Then he said this is their worship. And here is to be distinguished. A matter should be distinguished. If a person obeys the legislator not in accordance with this way but just following the desire while believing that the haram is that which Allah made haram and the halal is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made halal but he obeys them because of lowly desire then this does not take him out of the fold of Islam And this distinction is very important because many in our times were led astray by not understanding this verse in accordance with the way of the righteous predecessors, rahimahumullah. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, pointed the difference between the two states. That one takes the person out of Islam and the other doesn't. And this is the latter one which I explained. But in many books you find that the first part only is considered, meaning declaring them as kafirs in general, meaning those who obey the legislators, without giving this detail. And this, as I said, led many into making takfir of the rulers. And not only of the rulers, those who obey them, In particular, those who obey them, they make takfir of them. And they, are, they consider that shedding their blood is lawful. Because of the misunderstanding of this verse, and because of the lack of knowledge on the part of those people. The fourth type of the major shirk, 
is the shirk of love. And it is setting up rivals to Allah from the creation, loving them as much as one loves Allah. And then giving precedence to their obedience over that which should be, which must be to Allah. And invoking them and the like, seeking their help and seeking refuge in them. The evidence for this, that this is a major shirk, is in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 165 وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And of mankind are some who take for worship others beside Allah as rivals to Allah, they love them as they love Allah. But those who believe love Allah more than anything else. Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah mentioned that there are four types of love that one should distinguish between them and that many had gone astray because of the inability to distinguish between them first the first of these four types of love are number one loving Allah And this is not sufficient alone to save the person from the punishment of Allah and to attain his reward. Meaning mere love. Because the mushriks, the polytheists, and the worshippers of the cross, and the Jews and others love Allah. The second type of love, loving what Allah loves, loving what Allah loves, and this is the thing, this is the matter which permits one to Islam, makes him enter the fold of Islam and which also can take him out of kufr and the most beloved of mankind to Allah those who establish this love and those who are strong on it loving what Allah loves the third one is loving out of love for Allah and for the sake of Allah and these are necessitated by the second type these are necessitated by the second type which we came across earlier that is loving what Allah loves and loving what Allah loves cannot be applied except for loving out of love for Allah and loving for Allah's sake And the fourth type is loving besides Allah along with him. Loving besides Allah along with him. This is the shirki love. Anyone who loves beside Allah along with him, not for Allah not out of love for Allah, not for Allah's sake, then in this case, he sets him a rival to Allah, or sets it, or him, or it, as a rival to Allah. And this is the love of the mushriks. 
This is what the mushriks love. This is the major shirk and its types. The other type of shirk is the lesser shirk, a shirk al asghar or the minor shirk. So the first one is the greater shirk and this is the lesser shirk. And the major shirk which is unrestricted shirk termed as such in the Sharia and which causes a person to leave the religion. Now the second type is the lesser shirk and this covers every matter forbidden by Sharia which leads to the major shirk or a means of falling in it. And it is also every action or saying defined by Sharia as being shirk but which does not take a person out of the religion. <coughs> in the text it was called or it is called shirk like swearing by other than Allah like light show off in acts of worship and in sayings and in some statements lying like for example saying ma sha Allah wa shi'at whatever Allah wills and you will and the like whereas there is association in wording associating Allah with the creation like for example say for example saying Laula Allah wa fulan had it not been for Allah and such and such. And like for example Mali illallah wa ant I have none meaning to support or to help except Allah and you. Or like saying Wa ana mutawakkilun ala Allah wa alayk and I depend upon Allah and upon you and like saying وَلَوْلَا أَنْتَ لَمْ يَكُنْ كَذَا had it not been for you then such and such would not have taken place this could be a major or greater shirk in accordance with the person and his intention. The author, now back to his text, Rahimahullah, he said the dalil, the evidence that this, the most serious of all that Allah forbid is shirk, is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa, in chapter 4, 36, وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah alone, making all worship purely for Him, meaning enjoy none with Him in worship, and do not associate anything in worship along with Him. This ayah, in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that He alone be worshipped and He forbade shirk. So this order, affirming worship for him alone, means that one who does not worship Allah is a haughty and obstinate unbeliever, kafir. And that one who worships Allah and worships others besides him as well is an unbeliever, kafir and a mushrik, a polytheist. As our Shaykh Rahimahullah explained. And that, he added, and that one who worships Allah alone is a pure Muslim. And this ayah comprised the two matters. The command to worship and then the forbiddance 
to commit shirk which tells that the ibadah cannot be considered complete and correct except by avoiding shirk meaning general shirk including the mind the lesser and the greater shirk and also Allah generalized did not particularize the ibadah to dua invocation or salah or dependence or the like in order that it covers the entire worship and a person must be aware of the shirk both its major and the lesser type because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha Allah does not forgive association of anything in worship with him or setting up partners with him in worship but he forgives except that he forgives what is lesser than shirk to whomever he pleases here Allah says وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ he forgives except that which is دُونَ ذَلِكَ دُونَ ذَلِكَ some of the scholars have said that this great that this threat covers all shirk even lesser shirk meaning that دُونَ ذَلِكَ meaning ما هو أقل من الشرك that which is lesser than or anything else other than the shirk so this according to some scholars covers even the lesser shirk and that this ayah may cover both the major and the lesser the greater and the lesser why do we study shirk we study shirk and we learn about it because it is the most serious sin and it is the most serious of all that Allah has forbid and because it's a cause for admittance to hell we seek refuge in Allah from this and because the Tawheed is the greatest of all rights upon us what is the cause that leads to shirk generally the cause is excessiveness regarding the righteous generally it is excessiveness regarding the righteous as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said concerning some of the righteous at the time of Noah alayhi salam where people exaggerated in them and then ended up worshipping them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Nuh 71 verse 23 and they have said you shall not leave your gods nor shall you leave wad or suwa nor yaguth nor ya nor yauk nor nasr these are names which of righteous which people took as idols after they died and this explains that one of the most dangerous matters upon the tawheed of a person is excessiveness and exaggeration regarding the righteous 
dead or alive? Is this ummah immune from shirk? There is no doubt that shirk was committed and is still being committed in different forms in this ummah. Some occurred centuries ago and some existing still like the shirk concerning the righteous offering them certain worships and vows and clinging to their graves invoking them besides Allah And the Prophet ﷺ informed that the shirk will occur in this ummah. Even in the form of idol worshipping, the most clear form of it. Where he said ﷺ, لا تقوم الساعة حتى تلحق قبائل من أمتي بالمشركين وحتى تعبد الأوثان. The hour will not be established until Qaba'il min ummati, tribes of my ummah, will follow the mushriks. Wa hatta tu'bad al-awthan, until idols will be worshipped. From the evil consequences of shirk on the individual and the society. From that is slavery of people to each other the spread of innovations and superstitions between people. The person committing shirk, this shirk can cause the negation of his deeds, mollification of them, and making him deserve hellfire. The society where shirk is spread is vulnerable to other evils and fawahish, weaknesses, because of the lack of true dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather depending upon other than Allah and seeking help from other than Allah these are just a few of the evil consequences of shirk as to the forms of the actions of shirk which exist in some societies they are like a ruqa incantation and like a tamaim talisman wearing talisman and threads and the like thinking that they can provide protection and seeking blessings in stones, trees, and the like, and even graves. From that also claiming to know the unseen. From that is sorcery. From that is soothsaying. From that is astrology, and from that magnification of tombs and graves, and seeking means of nearness by offering certain offerings to and vows 
to these graves. All of these are actions of shirk associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. We seek refuge in Allah, the Most High, from all of this, and we ask Him, the Most High subhanahu wa ta'ala, to strengthen us in Tawheed and to save us and the Muslim Ummah at large from all forms of shirk and to return the Ummah to its pure deen Allah is the one all capable to do all things Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Gracias.